Well, looks like where are we are live on Monday after hours with Lisa. Oh, uh, we'll wait a few minutes, see if anyone checks in. Oh, comments um, are starting to pop in. Let's see, Angela. Um, I, I haven't started yet. I just got here, <laughs> so you didn't miss it. 6.43 Central Time. Well, it's 6 o'clock Colorado time. So Kathleen's a little early. Uh, hi, Michelle. Kathy's here. Mary. Wow, they're all like, <laughs> they're all popping in real fast. Excellent. Oh, you guys are so excited that you guys are joining me. It's been a while since I've done one of these things. Um, Edith is saying hello. And Ina from Texas. Excellent. Harriet. Oh, I see Sandy just scrolled through. From California, Maryland, uh, Patricia, why can't you see anything? It may take a little while to pop up, hopefully. Ah, Marin from Western Australia, Barbara's checking in. Excellent. Um, yes, you should, hopefully people are seeing me. Hopefully you're hearing me. <laughs> I'm getting thumbs up, so uh, people are checking in. Um, I do know that this is a Facebook Live, so because it is um, recording here, it may take a while to, um, what do you call it, buffer and get to your place. So, oh, wow. Uh, Bev from South Australia. Dane, uh, Dana from Saskatchewan, Canada. Oh, we're getting them from all over. Yee, that's so exciting. <laughs> Hi, Kathy from St. Louis. You can see in here. Fabulous. Thanks for letting me know. Um, just always uh, live broadcast. You just never know what's going to happen. Excellent. Uh, Patricia, yes, we met at the applique getaway and Pat's checking in and Sandy can hear me and see me and Sandy's from California. Oh, it's so nice to be able to see people. We had a fabulous, fabulous time at the applique getaway. This was by far, by far the best event um, yet. Probably, I don't know why, what happened, but uh, Texans, crazy Texans. <laughs> <laughs> Something happens when you go to Texas. What happens at Applique Getaway stays at Applique Getaway. Um, a Friday night, um, I didn't take, I didn't get a single picture of myself in my 80s getup. And we're talking ruffled socks and all. <laughs> I didn't get a single picture. So sorry, guys. But it was so wonderful to see everyone uh, getting into the theme. And they had the music playing. And uh, we had a lot of time. Excellent. Excellent. Kathleen Trinidad. Like Trinidad. Island Trinidad? Or Trinidad WI. Hmm. Ah, thinking about thinking about for next year. Seriously, Applique Getaway needs to be on your bucket list. It's just one of those events. Uh they we've taken over the entire um uh entire hotel. Machine embroiderers everywhere. Seriously. <laughs> Buckethead. <laughs> Not buckethead. Uh bucket list item. Bucket list item. Must go. Okay, Kathy, uh, you're not seeing anything. It may take a while to buffer to your to your page because it's the internet and uh, West Indies. Excellent, Kathleen. Sorry, I'm I'm multitasking here. Um, I admit <laughs> I'm horrible at it. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, just remember that if you miss anything, this is all going to be recorded. So it hopefully the buffer will catch up. If you're if you're watching live, otherwise it will be recorded and you can watch it um, afterwards. And if you have to miss anything in the middle, you can always just watch from the beginning in the in the first place. And then you have controls of fast forwarding <laughs> and things like that. Uh, yes, we had a great time at the Applique Getaway. VIP classes went fabulous. Those started on Friday, and then we had the regular classes, the shopping. We were doing demos in the booth. It was just nonstop. And Nancy, you are not late. I have been informed by emails that people want me to make sure I don't start exactly at six because it takes a while to get the uh, stream situated. So you're a-okay. We are doing good. Ah, excellent. So we're back, back in order. And just a couple of things I hopefully setting on newsletter this week. 
And the newsletter will have a recap from the applique getaway with links to the handouts um, and things that were um, provided for that class in case someone forgot to copy down the link I give to everybody. And then other thing is I have still two events coming up, hands-on events in Denver. We have three days coming up in a couple weeks in July, the end of Denver. And then again in Chicago. Both of them are still have spaces available. So if you are interested, those are the two hands-on classes here in the United States that I'm doing. And, and for those of you in Australia that are checking in, I am still coming in November. I'm coming there on holiday and I'm working with Echidna Sewing Products. They've scheduled me for a, um, a couple days of events and classes and all sorts of stuff. So if you're interested and you're from that area, that's going on in November. Um, and November, yes, Echidna Sewing Products. They're located in Kapalaba. The event that we have scheduled is in Brisbane, but to get all the information from them, um, get in touch with them, Echidna Sewing Products. Let's see. Hi, Claudia. I see you're checking in and Jersey Shore this week. Let me, I need to do a couple things first because the, I'm using Sue's thing. Um, here we go for the link for all of my classes. Command C. Boom. Command V. Boom. Theoretically, that should pop up in the comments. <laughs> oh, of course I had it the uh, applique getaway. That's not in there anymore. So get the, get the, <laughs> those are no, we're no longer taking those registrations for that. Didn't, I tried to make things efficient by copy and pasting stuff. And well, um, I copied and pasted old information. Okay. Hey, Denise from Minnesota, Mississippi is Carol. Uh, okay. Harriet says it, it tastes in excellent. Excellent. Okay. Oh, here's the link for, well, a kid not sewing products. If you're taking that, their link is on my education page that I just posted there as well. So what are we talking about today? Let me get my mouse over here. Red work. Now I got a couple questions on what is red work. And if you go to Google, you'll find all sorts. It's just a typical term used to describe outline designs. Now, a um, when I say outline embroidery designs, basically running stitches. So what's nice about creating red work or running stitch or blue work or outline or vintage or whatever designs you want to call these is that because you're only using a running stitch tool or running stitches, you're not having any filled areas or satins. A lot of, um, you know, what happens when you do satins or you have fills that don't match outlines. You have to worry about pull compensation and push and, and making sure you have overlap so that things don't have gaps. Well, with running stitch designs or, or red work style designs, you don't have to worry about underlay settings. You don't have to worry about, um, pull compensation or things like that because they're pretty much just running stitches and they're on the fabric. So as long as your fabric is secure in your hoop, like with a basting stitch or hooped, I like to hoop everything, but as long as it's secure in the hoop with stabilizer for proper for the fabric. So if I'm doing mostly, um, I'm doing uh, running stitch designs on um, like cotton, quilters cotton. So I use a tear away stabilizer, a wash away tear away, um, if you're doing it on a, a tea towel, make sure tea towels, tea towels are, um, they're tough to embroider. Now they're not tough to embroider. What's tough about them is that everyone turns them over and looks at the backside of your embroidery. So you feel like you have to pull out all that stitching. Oh, so if you are stitching on, uh, uh, tea towels, Use, make sure you start your fabric very well and use either a wash away, tear away and, ex and explain to whoever you're giving this to that the stabilizer on the back will wash away eventually or use a water soluble on the top and the bottom just so that, um, you, everything is stable in the hoop. I know we don't like to pre-wash things. I pre-wash everything simply because it's a habit I got into, but, and it does, that does control the shrinking. But um, make sure what red work design stitch very well on uh, flower sack towels, 
tea towels, anything that's a quilter's cotton, because there's not a lot of stitches and not a lot of pull. Okay, so some more people have checked in. This is the front side of the design, and we're actually going to digitize this guy. Now this design, this was my first test sew, and I actually have three test sews, but this is the basic artwork, which it is. You see on this side, there's this little doohickey guy here. I forgot that the rest of the design is a five pass bean stitch, and I didn't check everything when I did it in my software. So when I did this first test, so this guy on this side, oopsie, he didn't get done as well. So that was the first thing. This is why it's important to do a test. So because you might've done an oops. So I looked at that and I did some adjust. I fixed that. I did my second test. So, which is this guy here at the top. And I did something weird with his nose. So I got all the stitches correct. I did a little bit of reshaping, but his nose was weird. And at that point, his nose was weird. But then I also realized he had no whiskers. And this is supposed to be a cat. So I added whiskers. So my um, digitizing project kind of evolved from the original artwork. My original artwork looked like this. He had no whiskers. I needed to add whiskers because he... I don't, he looked, he didn't look like a cat. Cats have whiskers. So anyway, I digress, <laughs> but that's, this is the benefit of a doing a test. So first of all, you find oopsies, things that didn't work out exactly correctly, maybe settings that you made, and then you fine tune and adjust so that you get the final project and keep them. So let's go over to the software. And we're going to uh, check to see, let's just get started with this. So my first thing I need to do is switch over. Ha ha ha, it worked. <laughs> so I'm in the little corner down here in the bottom. And um, we have my software open. Now I'm in Stitch Artist and I am currently going to be working in, I have level three open. Now the reason I have this, what we're doing can be done in level one but I want to show some of the shortcuts uh, that are available in level three as I go with this. I don't want to switch back and forth. Quick question. Uh, what type of fabric do I use for my test sew? My test sews are usually done on the fabric I intend to stitch on. So since this was going to be stitched on a, uh, my final was on tea towel, I stitch on a cotton quilters, cotton fabric. I buy my fabric by the bolt from fabric finders. Uh, once I found a fabric that worked good for test sews, they have very, very good prices. And I buy it since I buy it by the bolt. I don't live anywhere near Joann's. So I buy a bolt of nice white and dark uh, navy blue, or maybe a black. And that's what I do my test sews on. It's just a very nice fabric. It's also 54 inches wide, which means I get m lots more bang for my buck. And it's, it's beautiful fabric. Anyway. Fabric finders. I'll click, I can find the link for that and post it if anyone's interested. What's nice is that if you are doing sewing, they have all sorts of fabric. Absolutely gorgeous seersucker. And you know, that's the little, you know what seersucker is. Oh, beautiful seersucker. And little kids prints. So if you're looking to buy um, uh, fabric, by the bolt because you're making lots and lots of things. They don't sell, they sell fat quarters. They were at the applique getaway. They're based out of Alabama, I think. Mike and Cedra. Oh, I met them at Houston and Guelph Festival and uh, they're just so sweet. But oh, but they also sell uh, sports fabric, especially I, I bought the Saints and Mardi Gras stuff, but we don't need to get into football again. Um, I'll post that link afterwards. We need to get back to to digitizing before I, before I forget. So Michelle, no, they're not based in Colorado, but uh, they, they do ship. So here we go. So I'm going to show you this is working in level three, but what we're going to do, most of it can be done in level one, except for the shortcuts I'm going to show. So anyway, first thing I need to do is I'm in create mode. That's my little button here. And I can tell because I have my stitch artist um, menu here at the top. So I need to bring in my image as a background. So I click on my image button and I'm going to browse to the folder that has my um, artwork. Now this is the swirly cat design that I'm going to be working on. So I'm going to bring him in here, hold him, um, hold my shift key down and resize it till it's large. Now, for those of you interested, they have a whole collection command C 
and I'm going to put in this command V and hit enter and go back here. Okay. The artwork for this is from clippartopolis.com. And what's nice about them is that they, if you sign up for their newsletter, they give free collections um, every week or every two weeks or something. Or if you're a digitizer and you're looking for copyright royalty or copyright friend, digitizer friendly that artwork that includes the copyrights. So you're allowed to digitize these designs and sell the designs. So um, I put the link to those kitty collection. There's a layer. It was, it was a free one that I'd gotten many months ago, many, many, many months ago when I collect artwork. <laughs> Just like we collect designs, I collect designs and artwork and fonts and we don't need to go there anymore. Um, so I happen to have this because I thought, oh, this would be a cute little outline style design. And if I wanted to say post this as a free download on the Brilliance Project page, hint, hint, um, this is where I'm allowed to do that because I've Clip Artopolis gives me the uh, link to do that. Once their sets, once the free sets are no longer free, they do put them up for sale. So that's the link that I posted is on um, in the comments section here. So when I look at this graphic here, I need to, before, first thing I do is make sure I have the hoop selected that I want to work in. Even though this designs for a four, four by four, I need to keep that, um, size in mind that I'm making a four by four hoop and I'm working in the five by seven hoop. Just, that's just how I, just what I'm working in. Next thing I need to do is start planning how it is that I, I want this to stitch because a red work design does, it has layers, but it doesn't really have layers. If you know what I mean, it's all flat. It's just one stitching, but you do want the stitches to follow in a logical order. We've all downloaded designs and they're, they're usually free ones that you've gotten from someone that just went click poof done in automatic digitizing software. And when they stitch, they start stitching on one side, like on the left side of the tail. And then it goes and jumps and runs over to this other side and stitches over here. Then it runs back over here and does up the tail. Then it runs over here and it comes over here. We don't want to be digitizing like that. Okay. We want to create a design that stitches evenly from one end to the other without jumping all over the place. Now, some of the details in this design, for example, his eyes, nose, and whiskers are not connected to anything. So of course we're going to have some jump stitches, but for the most part, we don't want any. So we're going to first zoom in, and this is all going to be done with our running stitch tool. Okay, Libby, I see you jumped in and then you lost me and then you came back. So hopefully the internet connection will stabilize here. So uh, I, you need to make sure that you can see what it is that you're working on. So I have my, I'm zoomed in so that I can see my entire artwork. And my plan is that I'm going to start here on this swirl and I'm going to, that's my starting point, my digitizing. And I'm thinking, how can I get from this swirl? as if I were to put a pencil on the paper and draw this shape and then continue drawing the whole shape. Okay. That you have to kind of plan this in your head. If it helps to print this out and, and do it with a marker or a pencil to get an idea of what's going to work, not a bad idea. But for me, I know that I'm going to stitch. I want to create an object that's doing this curl. And then I'm going to start going up and trace my cat and then do his head and his little loopy guys here and finish when I get to his head. I'm going to come down here and create my swirls and his feet and this little butterfly type thing. So I have a plan in my head of what's going on here. So the drawing in Stitch Artist, when you're using drawing with points, it's not hard. And there's a video. It's, I think it's the fourth video on the Stitch Artist playlist that teaches you how to draw with points. And I'll tell you, the more you do it, the better you get. Maybe. So I'm going to use draw with points and I'm going to left click with my mouse to draw this first curve. So I'm just going to plot points by left clicking, left clicking, left clicking, left clicking. I don't care that this is not perfect looking. Okay. It doesn't matter because 
when I'm done drawing and I'm done with this one curve, I'm going to be drawing a whole bunch of curves here. I'm drawing with this first one. When I'm done, I right click on a Mac. That's usually, if you have a mouse, it's the right click button, or if you're using your touchpad, it's two fingers. So figure out how to, how you right click on your computer. You can also hit the enter key on your keyboard, but you need to stop drawing and to stop drawing is enter or right click. Once you've stopped drawing, do you see how you have a boundary box? That means you can adjust, make adjustments now because you have a bounding box, which means I can take this line and I can drag him down and I can move, adjust my lines and move my beziers so that it's creating a smoother curve that more closely matches. Now, if I had done 16 billion points to create a really smooth curve, I couldn't do these fine tune adjustments because the more nodes you have, the more adjustments you have to make. And why you just need to, you get used to making something ugly on your first pass and editing. Okay. Now, my color, because I've been using it, is set to red. If your first color is, is, say, black and you can't see it, click on the color chip and choose a different color so that you have something that you have a color that you can actually see once you apply stitchers. Okay. Um, okay. Harry asks, black dots are beziers, correct? The nodes are the handles. So this is, this is a connection point. So it is like a it's a decision point. So, and the two guys sticking out of it are your two little bezier handles. So because I simply was left clicking, I created a whole bunch of curves and that's why it became a nice curvy shape because it's all curves. Okay. Now, once I have my curves done, I go up here and I'm going to select my stitch type. Now it pulls in the last stitch type that you used. And since I had just digitized this recently, it pulled in a bean stitch, which is how I want my, it's a bean stitch is a back and forth, like a triple stitch, except I have it set for five passes because on my final here, if you can see the zoomed in, you can see it's nice and heavy and that's the look I was going for. So it's a five pass. So you have my, my properties here and I've set my stitch length cause that's, the length that I want to use and my start and stop. So it's start stitching here and it's going to stop stitching at this point. Okay. So once I have my start and stop my one thing set at this point, I never want to do this again. So I'm going to go up to the file and I'm going to save my working file as, cause I'm only care about saving my, um, my, I'm, I don't care. I just save my working file. So when I hit, I don't need a stitch file at this point. I'm not stitching this yet. So I just say, and can you save both at the same time? Absolutely. But I don't want to get confused. So the only thing I'm saving is my working file. So I'm going to call it swirl cap and I'm going to click save. And you'll notice that it now says swirl cap here at the top. Every time I hit command S on my keyboard, that's the command or control S on my keyboard. It's going to save the updates automatically. So you're going to, I'm hopefully I will tell you, but every time I do a drawing point and I never want to do that again, I simply hit command or control S on my keyboard and that automatically saves it, whatever I just did to my working file. So I don't have to do it again. Okay. I, we don't want to work harder. We're working smarter, not harder. Okay. So. I have a little run stitch here. I have stitches. We're digitizing. Okay. Now I want to start going up and I mentioned I was going to go from this point to this point and then around his tail. So this is my bean stitch. This one is already done. It's going to start here at the, at the end point and it's stopping at this point. So my next little run stitch, I'm going to, I don't want to jump to this area up here. And I don't, I don't want to have extra stitches in that area. So I'm going to go with draw with points. I'm going to just left click, left click, right click to end, go to my run and stitch property. And I'm going to change this to be a single run. 
It could be a bean stitch, but that means it's going to do a five point stitch. And if I go over that again at the end, you're going to have a, you, it, in this case, it's not that big of a deal, but if I am tra traveling from one point to the next, so I'm traveling from the end of this swirl to the beginning of this tail, I add in, I travel. I don't want to jump. Okay. So I put a traveling stitch. It has the same stitch length. I'm going to cover it over later and no one's going to know that it, it just traveled up there. Seriously. No one can tell in that. If they can, it's a different conversation we're having. Okay. So that's my second travel, my second little run stitch. And it's up here at the top. Now I'm ready to draw around my tail. So I draw with points again. I'm just going to left click around and isn't this lovely drawing? Oh my gosh, Lisa, you are a Picasso. And I chose that artist specifically because we all know how Picasso draws. So I don't really have no, some weird artwork. All right. I left clicked all the way around. When I got to this point here, if I hold down the shift key when I click, that puts a cusp, which means that the angle will change. There's a, like I said, video drawing with points gives you the controls for the keyboard. At this point, I'm going to right click to end and I'm going to adjust my little handles, little beziers so that it get, has a nice little tush on my little cat here. He doesn't want to need to have this bump and I'm going to move up here. Now, if I, you're, I'm having a little bit of a hard time seeing the lines through the graphic, I can, I can see it, but I, it's getting to be a little bit confusing to me because it's like a little black line on a black graphic. So it, if you select your graphic here and you can change your transparency to a lower number, you see, I've had that mine down to 12. You can still see him in the background, but look at how that showed up. You can even see just the little lines here. Um, click off of it. See how much easier it is to see what it is you're working on. So the key point here is select your background graphic. You'll get the bitmap properties pane and just change your transparency to a lower number so you can still see it. Now I can go through here and so, oops, I don't want to be selected on that. I need to select my nodes here and reshape these. The fewer the nodes, the easier it is to reshape. If you want to get rid of a node, simply select data and double click and that removes the node so that you have less that less than you need to um, muck around with because when you, you have to adjust a whole bunch of them, it just gets confusing. Uh, Command S work in stitch artist. Yes. As soon as I am done with something I never want to draw again, I hit command S to save my work. Let's see, move that up here. So I have my tail drawn. I'm going to make this into a uh, running stitch by clicking up here at the top, but now I'm going to change this to a bean stitch so that it keeps the same settings that I have before because it's not, I don't want it to um, overpass itself. I want it to, this is going to be a single pass. This is my red work that I'm making. Okay. Now I mentioned that there was something I wanted to show you with stitch artist level three. Once you have these set, and say, I know that these settings work for me because for my style, because I've done test sews. So I know that I, woo, this is supposed to be, hold on. This one is a five pass. This one's a three pass. You see, it's not, it's not the same. I'd have to go through and change this to be a five pass to match my first one. So in Stitch Artist 3, if you have a style that you like, and you click on this little um, style sheet, the quick style sheet, you can add a new quick style and assign this stitch, this type of stitch type to be that quick style. So I'm going to change it to be a bean stitch and click. Um, why is it updating? Oh, my ties. Ah. Set it to be my bean stitch because I don't want my I don't I don't set my ties to the very end. So my bean stitch is set here, and now I can choose this other line, and I'm going to click on normal, and then I'm going to go back to bean, and it automatically sets it to be the correct settings that I already have. So now every time I draw a line, okay. So if I go and I go click, click, 
click. Where how am I going to do this one? This one's going to go down to here. Right click to end and I'm going to go to running stitch. I can click on this guy and change it to be a bean stitch and it's automatically going to assign the same properties that I already have. Now, I drew this little guy fast. <laughs> As you see, we have our tail and it starts at this point and it stops at this point. And now we have this one I drew that wants to start here at the bottom and is going to end at this point. You see what would happen between this start, the stopping point, it would jump all the way down to the bottom. In fact, if I turn my jump stitches on, you'll see that little red stitch that's here that's showing it's jumping from one point to the next. So to avoid that and solve the problem, I'm going to move my little start up to the end of the first one so that it now is going to adjust itself. So that it's going to now start at this point and stop at this point. And I can continue clicking and adding my objects as I'm drawing. This is all, it's just clicking with the mouse and then adjusting your, your things. So, oh, Rob has checked in. You're lurking from Alaska. Well, that's nice, nice to hear. <laughs> oh, I forgot to do my command S so I can save and never do this again. You can always tell if you haven't saved if there's a star up here at the top. If you have an asterisk up here at the top of your name, you haven't saved your work. And you need to save your work often. Um, because otherwise, if your computer crashes, you get to start all over again. So it's just save. It's quick and easy. Okay. Hopefully this is making sense, guys. I'm going to draw his little details here. So I'm going to use my left click, left, 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 not panicking. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Right click to end. I'm going to click on this little node and draw, drag my handles around so that I make a little bit more what I'm expecting. Put it on my run stitch, or run stitch, it remembered my bean. And because it's, it's basically remembering the last stitch type that I had used, it has automatically set my quick style to bean stitch. So that's just a, a quickie thing to remember. Now, it has drawn, ugh, sort of, these guys down here at this point. Um, I, from this point, at this point right here, I need to draw the top of his hat here. So I'm going to draw with points and I'm going to left click, left click, left click, right click to end, apply a stitch type and see that, that stitch, that long jump. I'm going to move my start over to this point and I'm going to move my stop right on top of that as well, because now I'm going to continue with the ear and go from that point on. Um, how would that last section stitch out? Well, let's go, hold on, I see my asterisk, command S, gone. We're gonna go to stitch simulator and you can actually see this is it stitching this swirl, runs over, stitches the butt and the tail, gets to this point here, and at this point, it's going to do a run down and then it's going to stitch right back on top of each other and over and then it does this little guy here. Okay, now I'm going to need to adjust that because this little line here, because I don't want that happening. I'm going to see, one second, I'm going to zoom in. So that means I need to go over to this screen, go on this, whoops, boom, boom. Okay, this has, whoops, how do I get it? Can you see, even though there were little bits of overrun at that one part of the ear, hey, you can't tell, can't tell anything. Okay, these are little tiny stitches. And even if you go up close and look at it, you can't tell that it actually duplicates itself right at that one point. Okay, it's, it's a little, uh, if anyone points out that it's heavier there, they don't deserve your artwork. They do not, you can buy their gifts at Walmart from now on. I mean, it's not obvious, this is, at six inches away <laughs> and you can't see it at six inches. So the only way you can see it is by going really, really close. Okay. <laughs> so what's nice about when moving your starts and stops like that is that the software, when it does the under run that's going into this point, it's the exact same holes as the five pass or the triple pass or whatever that's going right on top of it. 
exact same holes. I think the only time you would probably notice this was if you were to use maybe 12 weight thread or 30 weight thread, maybe because 30 weight is, is significantly heavier. Maybe I, 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 no one's noticing that you'll learn that by doing a test cell, the test cell life of a digitizer revolves around the test cell. Oh, okay. Now we noticed by looking at our, at our simulation here that this doesn't match up right. So I'm first of all, I need to zoom in so that I can see what I'm working on. Go back to create mode. Let's see. I'm going to take this guy and let's move him down a little bit. And we're going to take these guys and move them up. And as long as they're pretty much on that line, no one's going to notice. And if anybody notices, you have different conversations with them. Okay. This was a little bit too. Here we go. Isn't that pretty? See, much better, much better. Okay, so we have this guy. He's starting and stopping right here. Now, I need to draw the other side of his, his head. Okay, whoopsie, move my mouse. Okay, glad you think it looks great, Kathy. You're, everyone, whatever you create, someone's, they're going to love what you do. Okay. This part is this guy here. Now I'm just going to draw him, draw with points, left click, left click, left click, left click, and left click up down here. Boom. Right click to end. And now we're going to adjust and I'm going to move him up here and we're going to get whoopsie. Well, I probably didn't need to delete that one, but whatever. Make sure you talk to yourselves when you're digitizing. Because even though you're not broadcasting live and doing this all um, on screen, it just helps you get through the thought process. And you don't have to be actually perfect. The graphic in the background is just a um, guide for you. So if you happen to want to give your cat chubby cheeks, knock your socks off. But we're just going to follow this way here. I'm going to apply my stitch type. It's this, the bean. It starts up here at the top. And I'm going to stop it right here at the bottom because I want to get that swirly guy in here. Okay. Now the swirly guy, I want, if I just do a little run stitch this point, I still need to get the first swirl I want to stitch is this one up here. So I'm going to, it's going to be easier for me just to show you my thought process here. So I'm going to be left click. I'm doing a shift like script to give me a cusp, left click, left click to end, well, right click to end. I'm sorry. I'm going to move this little node here and drag this up. I'm going to change this to a run, but under my quick style here, I'm going to change it to be a traveling stitch, which has the same properties as the one I saved from the other side, which means it has only a 2.3 stitch length is a single run. And it remembers everything that I had already set because I set my quick styles and quick styles are a level three function, which can save you a lot of time. So the reason I ran up here is because I now want to create this little guy left, 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 right click to end. Whoopsie. Right click to end, drag my little guys around fiddle with them a little bit so that my curves are curvy looking and not ugly. Once I have this guy done, he becomes a stitch, but I now want him to go back to being a bean stitch and it starts up here at the bottom and I want it to go through here and I want to stop at the bottom as well. Okay. And just like it did on that, on his face, Curves are like, I love them, but I always end up fiddling with them to make them smooth and swirly looking. Just like we had that little overlap at this part, we have the same exact thing that's going to go on at the swirl. See, it stitches, stitches up where in the, it's stitching his butt. Now it's coming up doing this guy here, stitching, stitching, stitching back over the ear, goes down, does a single run to that little spot at the bottom, comes up to the, the paw 
runs, travels up to the, the thing here, runs to the top, and then does the five pass bean stitch all the way down here to the bottom. So what's nice is that because it's the same stitch length, goes in the same holes, I said that before, repeating myself, I'm back in create mode. I hit command S on my keyboard. So I get rid of my asterisk to save my work. So I never have to do this again. <sighs> oh, we're still working on it here. Let's see. I'm going to make this little curvy guy. Now at this point for this one, you might, you need to be a little careful so that your curves match each other because this one will be obvious if your running stitch is not um, on top of the other um, if your bean stitch is not on top of the traveling stitch. So you might need to zoom in and make some uh, um, adjustments to do that. Okay, one second. This one's going to be a run stitch here, and I'm setting it's a bean stitch, but I need to move my start up to this point and my stop down to this point because that's how I want it. Question from June. Why did the simulated stitch only show single stitch even though you have it set for a five pass bean? Well, it it did show five pass. Let's go back and, and let me zoom out and we'll run the stitch simulator one more time. It does, it. the top most stitch is going to be the five pass bean. So this first curve, we know that's set to five pass. That's my travel. This is a five pass all the way up here to the top and down to the bottom. When it gets to this point, it's only going to go a single one, two, three. See, it's only single stitching down to this point. And now it does a dun, 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 does the five pass back up over the same holes. And now at this point, it continues doing that five pass up to this point. So if it has to backtrack over itself, it automatically puts in a traveling stitch. And I'm pointing to my screen, but right where my mouse cursor is. From this point, it's traveling up to this, and now it's back with the five pass back onto this point. And that's because I moved my starts and stops. So I didn't have to manually add in all those travel stitches because in some other software that you don't have adjustments over start and stops, you it won't do that. But when it has when you change a start and stop, like we did on this piece right here from this start until the junction, it's going to do a five pass bean from this junction to the end point. It's going to do a single pass with the same stitch length as the five pass bean so that the needle goes in the same hole. And then from this point back to the stop, it's going to do five passes over it so that it falls in the same hole and you get the consistency. I don't know if that made any sense with me trying to explain it, but once you watch what the software does, it it's moving your starts and stops. That's how you get rid of your jumps. It's how you can connect all the points so that, um, you don't have any extra stitches. You don't have to have trims or anything like that. The other thing that you, uh, at the very beginning in my locking my bow tie, I didn't have, I don't set my ties because all these guides are connected to each other. So I don't want to put tie offs at the end of each object. When I'm finished with this whole thing, and this is what my finished one actually looks like here. There's my finished cat. And if you notice, there are all the little objects in here. So this is a one color design and it has 32 objects in it. Okay. It's the old, on my start and stops. If I click on this first run and I go to my tie off, I would set my first one to be a, a tie at the entry. None of the other ones after this have any ties set to them. They, they shouldn't. If they do, then I made a mistake. Okay. Now my very last object, which is this paw print here, because if you notice at this point, that's here. Where was I? Boom. Oh, we're doing all these dorky little ones. Okay. There's that second swirl. This is pretty much where we're at this one. Then we go to this little paw print here, this little half of the paw next half of the paw. And I'm just moving my starts and stop. Then this guy, then this guy, you see how we're all these different little connectings. So when we get to this very last bit, because this one is already the ear get to this part, we need to have a tie at the exit. 
And that just locks it so that it the software is going to put a locking stitch and knot and tie, clip it off. The next object here, I started doing his little ear, which isn't connected to anything. So it has a tie at the entrance and the exit. So this one has to have it. This little run stitch was just another inner ear. He has tie offs. And then I decided to do little satins for his eyes so that they would... I didn't want little run stitch eyes. I just did little satin eyes. And both of those will need to have tie-offs at either either end of them so that they don't unravel. Okay, so there's his one eye, his two eyes, his nose. And then at this point, I had already done my last um, stitch or my last idea. And I needed to add his whiskers because my cat needed whiskers. So each one of these has ties at the entry and the exit. Now... If I had put whiskers in at the beginning, because I and my graphic showed me this was just something I added at the very end, I probably would I would have um, incorporated them as I was doing my line, just as I had before. But these are separate, so I don't mind um, stitching them as they were. And this has become my final little testo, so he's all good to go. But thirty-two colors. 30 through 32 objects, one color. So if I you stitch on a machine that trims, you won't have any jump stitches on this. The only place I had um, jump stitches on the machine that if I were to stitch this on a machine that doesn't trim, it's going to be between these objects that are not connecting. Hopefully that makes sense, guys. So Joe Rita says, very interesting. Your biggest problem. I'm not sure which one's the biggest problem, but um, glad you saw something that um, was no longer, <laughs> hopefully you no longer have a problem anymore with this. <laughs> um, we almost got done, but it's, uh, it'll probably, I mean, it's, look at, we got this stuff. far we got swirl cat command S all done. So we have him digitized. We're the only little guys I have left to do is a little flower and paws and that's not hard to do, but it's all repetitive. And the key point is, is trying to understand how it is to, um, how you'd want it to stitch. This is why you'll see me say often that it's very hard to digitize designs if you haven't stitched designs. Um, anyone that does digitizing and doesn't have a machine to do test sews on, uh, they have to, you have a lot of um, intuitive uh, observation skills or really understand what it is they're looking at because you, we all know we don't want to trip jump stitches. If we have to chip jump stitches, we use little tiny scissors. You know, these are my Kai double curves so that I can trim my jump stitches in between them. Um, but if you were, um, if you have the ability of hiding stitches, that's what you should do. And hiding stitches mean traveling stitches. Let me just go back and show you um, this guy one one more time. This guy here, swirly cat. I went through here on this swirl because if you remember at this point when I did this swirl, it's there's actually two objects. I was really careful making sure that those two objects were right on top of each other so that... Um, you can't see that line and no one can see that line. Trust me. Okay. <laughs> so, um, that's, that's the careful part when you have things that are going to be overlapping each other and it's easy to hide stuff under, under outlines, under fill stitches, uh, things like that. Uh, Dia. Oh, excellent. Glad you, glad you enjoyed this. Um, uh, Marin, do I prefer to use a mouse or a stylus? Uh, I use both. I end up always, I have a, a magic mouse for my Mac that's here. I have a Wacom tablet. It depends on what computer I'm working on and if I'm doing heavy duty digitizing. Most of the time I'm doing customizing and digitizing, moving back and forth. Use whatever is comfortable for you. As you notice, I'm not focusing on my drawing skills. Everything I drew on that screen was pretty beforehand. You can always edit. And if you can just let it go and just make a few nodes, you can always add more nodes. Um, I don't know if I actually mentioned adding nodes. Let me go back here. Boom. Possibly. Okay. When you have, whoops, I'm in create mode. Excellent. 
When you want to delete a node, say I want to get rid of this node that's right here, you select it and double click on it or hit the delete key and now you can reshape your line. It's easier to reshape when you have fewer nodes. However, sometimes you need to add a node because you're finagling too much with these nodes and you're just like, oh, if I just had a node there. To add one, just put your mouse cursor on the line so that it has that little swirly guy at the end of it and double click. Whoops. When you double click, you just added a node. So to, to, to remove a node, single click to select it and then double click on it and reshape your line. To add a node, double click on the line and it adds a node that's in there. But the fewer nodes you have, the easier it is to adjust. Um, going insane and trying to be perfect with this and say trying to create this little curve perfectly the first time. Doing this, right click to end. What it, if you have to adjust that, and you gotta move every single note, every single little guy, because otherwise, say you just wanted to make it a little bit bigger because the butterfly, when you did it, your butterfly didn't show up. Look at what a pain that is. Eh, not my idea of a good time. So, we don't do that. Select and hit delete. What we do is we draw with nodes and you go click, 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 right click to end, and now you can just reshape your lines the way you need to. Okay, so much easier. So much easier. So just get used to creating blobs and, and funky looking stuff and editing them. Um, know that you are in good company because I create lots of, <laughs> lots of funky looking things. Um, I don't, Beck, I don't know if there's a, a funky connection going on. I can tell you that this, um, this has been recorded. So if you lost it and you want to re-watch any part of it, you can just watch it again at your in your leisure. But it is now getting close to seven o'clock. I have to go upstairs. Oh, Pam, glad this made sense to you. Thanks for thanks for letting me know. Um, I, the comments you guys are giving me, uh, awesome. Every so often I see thumbs up. That means people are, are getting it. That makes sense to me. Um, Edith, now you need stitch artist. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, just for you, just thank you for reminding me. Uh, da, 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 da. I have a coupon that you can use. Let's see. Let me just one second here. Maybe command C, boom, command V, maybe, enter, okay, theoretically, okay, <laughs> I just copy and pasted the whole thing. Um, since I just did the applicate getaway, I do have a coupon available, and so in the comments link, I have put a link to my classes that I teach, the upcoming ones that I mentioned earlier. And I also put my affiliate link because I do make a small commission. I do not work for Embillions. I am so bubbles. <laughs> that's me. You can see this little, that's my website right there. Ah, I forgot it was a post above my head there. And um, I have a coupon in case you guys want to uh, get the, the Stitch Artist software. So... I, I am allowed to do that. Okay, it's beer 30, Rob. Yes, it is. I only got through half of it so far, so it's, you guys, it was keeping busy. Um, Laura likes to review a, theor of a theory. I'm killing her bank book, sorry. Um, yes, my thought process. Uh, it's a little scary sometimes, but you should gain confidence. You can't break anything, and as long as you save often, save often, and it's, just save often. You can't, you can't bust it. Once you save, it's there and you don't have to redo it again. Um, Harriet learned a lot tonight. Excellent. Excellent. And Angela, you're not sure how I found it. <laughs> Needs to find steps next week. Well, um, every, if you, my, my page, so bubbles that's on Facebook, I will post a, um, I schedule this. I usually do it about we sometimes a week. I usually schedule by Friday. So if you come to my page, I put in a scheduled announcement on saying what next week's topic's going to be. It's something about in brilliance. I'm not sure yet. I have a whole list of topics that you guys have given me. And if you choose the get reminder, 
because that little broadcast shows up. There's a little button that says get reminder. When I go live, you get it in your newsfeed. So even if you're not home, you have a delink, you have a delink, a delinquent link. <laughs> you have a link to the um, live video in your newsfeed so you can watch it later or save it, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, that's one way to find, find out uh, where I'm going to be. I also post them uh, um, to the uh, Stitch Artist Digitizing fans. And I have a group for those that are interested in taking classes from me called In Brilliance Educational Opportunities. And I usually post a link to that there as well. So that's, I'm like a bad penny. I'm floating around all over the place. Anna, yes. And now it's time to practice. Yes, 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 practice. Practice makes perfect, or at least makes less blobby things. <laughs> but, but embrace the blobs that you digitize because you can always edit. Don't get hung up on what the shape looks like. It shouldn't look perfect. It shouldn't look perfect. Then you do practice it well. Uh, you tried the link and said there was an error. Uh, of course there's an error. Well, I'm not sure which link. Um, I will have to, to go through and make sure that everything's sort of working right. News feed in Facebook. Yes. News feed in Facebook. That's, it sounds like we're communicating here, <laughs> but I'm only getting snippets of information. So, um, yes, when you, when you choose to get reminder, when I go live, the little, the whole thing comes in your news feed. So when you refresh or on your phone, it'll come up and say, uh, bubbles menagerie is live and you can either click the link or it'll just, it'll be there so you can find it afterwards. All right, guys, now it's seven o'clock. I'm going to go upstairs and have some, um, some dinner, watch some TV with my, my husband. Um, I, we posted some photos on my page today. He was outside taking macro photos of the flowers. So that was fun. So anyway, guys, have a great night. Practice, have fun, post your, your photos. Um, oh, the fabrics place again is fabric finders. Oh, my fillet link is an error. Okay. I'll have to get that fixed. I'm not sure why it shouldn't, but it does. Uh, fabric finders LLC. So I will post that link as well. I will edit the description of this post and put the, the link up in there. So, okay guys, have a great night and thank you for spending some time with me today.